Hello everyone and welcome to Anti-Life Reviews. This is episode number 66, that's 66, and I am Lee Tony Makaya, Master of Minds and of Men. Today we start in the realm of Marvel, uh, but we head back to Earth where today we look at Moon Knight, Volume 3 or Volume 5, depending on if you count miniseries or not. I usually do, so I'm going to say this is Volume 5. But whatever the volume, it's issues 1 through 6 from April 2006 to November 2006, entitled The Bottom. Sounds kind of sexy, and I know the Moon Knight trailer just came out not too long ago. Show looks pretty decent, uh, so let's see if this can you know, can compare. Uh, but of course, I got to do this. So before I begin, please like and subscribe. It's a small channel, trying to grow, trying to get better. I want to entertain, and if I've done that at all, please just hit that button, add me to the list of ever-growing people you don't listen to on YouTube. Writer's an artist on this. Uh, writer is Charlie Huston. He is an author, of which I've never read any of his novels. I guess they're sort of crime pulp novels. He's done comics here and there, but this was probably his best-known high-profile run. Artist David Finch. An artist who, while talented, is not really my bag. He reminds me of a more talented 90s artist. Just a bit edgelord to him. Still a talented guy, but meh to me. He had some runs in Ultimate X-Men, Wonder Woman, and some various Batman comics. Uh, yeah, not really thought about either of these two, but uh, that doesn't really mean anything. Do one. Now it's impossible to talk about Moon Knight without people bringing up Batman. That the fact that they only have surface level similarities. Well, they are rich, crazy guys who play dress up and beat people up. Uh, for a long time, Moon Knight was really based around the supernatural world of Marvel: Tomb of Dracula, Werewolf by Night, Blade. Uh, Midnight Suns and all that stuff, and it was only the more modern telling, and, and this series in particular is a huge one for it. Honestly, this is might be responsible for people wanting to compare the two a lot more, even if it's been flirted with in previous series. But most of this issue is flashback, or series of flashbacks, we see Moon Knight's utter violence. Uh, Mark Spector is his name. Destructive tendencies as he dishes out his own brand of blood-soaked justice on who, whatever town he's in, it's Marvel, so I'm going to say somewhere in New York. We see all of his Batman-esque trappings, Frenchie, this is Alfred, giant ship, rich guy stuff, etc. He had a girlfriend or wife, and more to the point, he had a god, Goshinu, who gave him his powers. Maybe not, that's explored later. And we see now, Mark Spector, the Moon Knight is a broken down, wheelchair-bound drunk who lost everything after his injury, and now he begs at the statue of Goshinu to be a hero again. Honestly, my summary is almost more than the content we saw in the comic. It does set an interesting tone for the kind of grim and grit we're going to get here. We see Mark as a violent, sadistic monster who loves the insanity of the superhero life when he can't, and when he can't have it, he breaks all of his relationships. We see him smacking his girlfriend, losing his his shit, etc. It's interesting, a little grim, dark for me, a little '90s eye rolling, but uh, overall, it's fine. Issue 2. As a note, this issue is when we find out David Finch was straight copying or tracing David Mazzuccelli from Frank Miller's Batman Year Run Run. Uh, year One Run. Year One Run. Now that I know, it's pretty obvious. There's a kick scene that is just, it's just Bruce Wayne. This whole issue revolves around how the Moon Knight got injured. A particularly gross battle with a guy by the name of the Bushman, or the Bushman, who likes to wear people's faces, they fall off a building, shatters Moon Knight's legs, he then manages to beat the Bushman, kill him, cut his face off, and present it to Koshinu, who does not respond to Mr. Specter after this uh, collect call. We also meet Crowley, uh, what, a, what a name, an old homeless man who gets ma mark drugs and dispenses wisdom. And a villain, or the villain of this, a guy who looks like Sam Rockwell. I can see people's weaknesses, problems, it's kind of interesting, but it's a bit overdone. Another find, it's decompressed to hell. This whole issue is exactly what I said. And there's no nuance to any of it. The villain's guy's powers are mildly entertaining in how they are conveyed. But once again, it's felt too edgelord. It felt so exhausting to read this kind of violent crap. I just, it's not entertaining. We get it, the superhero medium is inherently violent. There's usually a moral point or standing on which the hero normally has, or a point in general. This was just, oh, blood, guts, gore. Got it. Yeah, 1997 code. Issue 3. The bad guys go over Mark's history for some reason. Mark meets with a friend of his, Jean-Paul, who is a homosexual. I mention this only because this is dealt with as a huge deal by this comic, which by 2006 was not a big deal in comics. I know today we pretend having gay characters some mark of quality. Most people didn't care 20 years ago about it. Certainly not the horrifying level Mark Spector does. It's not long after the lunch that Jean-Paul and boyfriend are beaten by a man quite savagely. Mark hun hunts down who did it and savages that man, quite savagely. He then offers uh, the bloody 
you know, the bloody cane that he beat the guy with, the bloody knife for his god Koshinu. Meanwhile, the bad guys hire Taskmaster to hunt down Mark. Uh, question is, why do they want Mark? Why do they want to send Taskmaster af- after him? They went over his history, but I'm genuinely confused as to their motives. Seems like they were there to watch him, and he went for lunch. So they had his friend beaten, and they sent Taskmaster after him. Okay, well, I, I don't have a problem with, with gay characters being killed or beaten. It is, it is a comic. I, I think it's strange to put that revelation out there, then have them immediately get beaten. Like, it's just a call for sympathy. It's a, it's a little bit of woman in refrigerator syndrome here that I feel, honestly, and I, I don't like it. The story is tiring. It is boring. and it, It's not a hard read. It's just, I don't care. It's good to see Taskmaster, though. His design is interesting. Issue four. Koshinu appears, or so Mark thinks, but he looks like the Bush man... So that goes well. He tries to convince Mark to, f- to fight for him again. Mark's ex-girlfriend shows up and bitches about him, almost killing the guy who tried to kill Jean-Paul. Whatever. Stupid bitch. And Taskmaster shows up and beats Mark up. Okay. We also get lots of stuff about a guy who can see people's weakness. That the guy I mentioned earlier, but it's whatever. Stuff with the Shinu and the Bushman was kind of interesting. Get some gritty introspective. Everything in here is gritty. But it was pretty bland beyond that. Let's hope we, we at least get a cool fight with Taskmaster next issue. And I would love to see more with the girlfriend instead of her just showing up and complaining. Like, he's presented, she's presented as supposed to be like a moral center here. But she shows up, how dare you do that? And then Taskmaster shows up. And it's like, well... She just came off as really annoying and, and not interesting. And she should be the foil for Mark being a piece of shit and not also a piece of shit. Issue 5. The ex, the butler, and his wife all help uh, Mark escape from Taskmaster. And they flee to his uh, bat cave, I guess. Moon cave, night cave, whatever. Where he immediately, after only walking under his own power for the first time in five issues, puts on the Moon Knight costume and is ready to fight. Okay, uh, he then flies to the evil guy's corporate headquarters and crash lands in their boardroom. Okay, this went from barely being able to move to looking twice as buff as ever in the span of three pages. Didn't make sense, and the, the arc needed more time to build up to that. Taskmaster fight should have been issue two. If this is if this is the way you want to do things, but it's all stretched out, and now the bottom half is heavy with action, and it makes no sense. How did he know where their headquarters were? It's never said. The fight with Taskmaster also sucked. Issue 6, Mark is now the Moon Knight. He beats up the bad guys. Him and the girl make up but don't get back together. That'll be for later issues. Jean-Paul is fine, and Mark is accepting of his lifestyle. What a guy. And the guy who could see people's weakness is scared of the Moon Knights, who, who believes he is an avatar of Kashinu, and they are now tied together. Or maybe he's just crazy, and we set up the next arc. Um, it wraps everything up, what there was to wrap up. So, let's go to the overview. This sucked pretty badly. It was decompressed, boring, grim, dark, eye-rolling crap. It was just not good. Everything was so cliché. Like, so cliché, it actually hurt to read. I could have written this in ninth grade. None of it really made any sense. There were bad... What were the bad guys' plans? Who were they? Why did they want Mark Spector? None of it's ever really explored. He wasn't doing anything. He was sitting at home. And they were watching him. And then he went to lunch. And they were like, Oh, no, a man's having lunch with a homosexual. We have to do something. And, like... They went into full, uh, they went into full gay panic mode for some reason. Like, and, and that's another thing that was I did not care for, for the, the 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 gay arc where oh how dare you be gay oh but I accept you in the end like fuck like fuck you dude like <laughs> if in two thousand and six you felt that way like I would still be I would be surprised and you know it 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 just came up as really tacky and cheesy and and like that was thrown in. For, for sympathy for this character that we barely see, and it was it, it, it was pandering it to the worst degree. I did not. I thought that was very poor um, handling of, of of what could have been an interesting relationship, where Mark was like, "Oh, I didn't know you were like that. Let's you know, let's talk about, it. let's discuss it. Let's you know, maybe not even that, but just like accepts his friend for who he is." Or I, I don't know. There's a billion ways you could have presented this that didn't come off so awful. Taskmaster was wasted as Marvel is wont to do with him. There was no sense of tension or drama or excitement or any reason any of this is happening. Uh, I did not enjoy this. It was boring. It took me twice as long to read because I kept stopping to do anything else. Honestly, I was honestly reading other comics. Just keep my interest. I I would reread Bleach while I was reading this. Like, I got through 20 or 30 chapters of Bleach reading this crap. Um, I won't be doing a review on Bleach too long. Moon Knight's an interesting character, and there were some hints, some flashes of interest here, and I don't mind Marvel 
using them going forward, how, how they did, but mostly it was try-hard trash that did nothing for me, and I, I doubt anybody else. Well, that was Moon Knight The Bottom, and what a fitting name, because the bottom it was. Bottom of the trash heap, that is. So what did you folks think of my review? Do you like The Moon Knight? Are you excited for this show coming out? Do you know anything about this character? Let me know down below your thoughts and feelings. Hit my Patreon, let me know what you want me to review. Totally keep an open mind, willing to consider just about any comic. Also follow me on Instagram for daily Twin Peaks memes. And don't forget to hit up my podcast, The Dark Peaks Podcast, with me and another Instagram guy talk about stuff. Next week, I head into darker territories, uh, but not not poorly written territories, where I look at Hellboy, Seed of Destruction. This has been Lee Tony Makaya, Master of Minds and of Men. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>